Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there, Hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. So we're kind of close to the Jafar raid, and yes, I'm still going to be calling him Jafar, and we've been talking about the relic system a lot since that dev diary came out. Even on the podcast, which I actually haven't uploaded yet, I should probably do that. Anyway, I wanted to just talk about speculations on how the system's going to work, and what kind of weapons we can expect to come out of it, because the gunner side is always more interesting than the melee side. So I'm going to break up this into segments. The first part here, I want to talk about augments. Some people are saying that these relics are not going to have the normal augments that other weapons do, which from a power perspective would actually make some sense. We're already getting things like attack, affinity, status, and element and on the awakened stuff. However, it does look like we'll be able to augment them normally, maybe not at first, but after some upgrades perhaps? The greatsword they showed off only had two of these orange sections on the status screen, which is for the regular stats and showing the empty slot. Weapons that have three of these has one for the augment section. However, on the gun lance and hammer they showed, they do have the three slots, and the bow gun even has its four, which makes sense because bow guns have one more tap for ammo. So not really sure what's up with that greatsword, but maybe the weapons don't come finished and you have to do something to make them be able to get augments, but it certainly looks like we'll be able to augment them, which again makes total sense because think about it, the focus of the end game here is the guided lance. If they made it to these new weapons, which Capcom even admits are probably going to be the best weapons in the game, are unable to have augments, then that would totally invalidate the entire area going forward. You can just run Jafar at a Master Rank 24, which is basically when you finish story, and skip that entire area. There's no way they'd let you do that. It's a huge part of Iceborne. So I definitely think that we're going to be able to do augments on these weapons. I don't think the tab is going to be for the awakened stuff because you can see that it shows just right here at the bottom of the weapon where all the skills would be like kind of like the cove weapons so yeah augments so what this means though is that we get the augments and the awakened skills so yeah health augment slots element all that stuff can be applied to these weapons there's just another level of added stats we could put on these things so keep that in mind the next thing i want to talk about is the particulars of the set bonus on the weapons so there are two theories floating around. The first is that these, like Kolv weapons, just grant you the set bonus on the weapon. Arc Tempered Kolv came with crit status and crit element on her weapons, but these ones we get to freely choose, assuming your RNG is kind, and yes, you only get one. The other theory is that it only grants you one piece of that particular set bonus, and I can see both to be honest. So in favor of Awaken granting the whole skill, it would kind of fit in line with the cold weapons, and they are locking you to just one, keep that in mind. Plus, we have seen some of the skills like Uragon Essence and Brachidios Essence. Who the hell wants one point of Uragon skill, which is just guard up? You can get that on a level 2 decoration. Or Anjanath's, one point for half of stamina cap up? Come on, that's kind of a waste. Kirin Divinity? Nobody is going to be putting this on for one of three points of great luck. Tigrix Essence, one of three for free meal secret. And that's the thing, like Tigrix and Brachidios, these only grant you the skill cap unlocks. They don't even provide you skills. They just let you add more. I don't know, it seems like garbage if they just give you one point on stuff like this. So on the flip side, what they showed here and what people are looking at is that the skill provides the set bonus skill, not the actual name of the skill. Like it shows Nargakuga Mastery, not true spare shot kind of like how the cold weapons did. And our Gakuga Mastery is only activated when you have three of the pieces. And some of the skills we've seen, like Velkana, have two bonuses in their set, so would you get both? And some of these skills are fucking crazy strong. True Spare Shot, Master's Touch, Frostcraft, True Critical Element. Getting the entire skill on the weapon immediately invalidates every other weapon that comes before these, hands down. Fuck, even after, probably. It is ridiculous. So on that part, I think it can go either way, as far as we can tell. Now, I wanted to talk about the power creep on it, because I'm kind of afraid of it. So I want to go over what the weapons would look like in the scenario that we actually get the full skill. So just for reference on our bows, we currently sit at 720 element with a water bow. With true critical element set, our critical element is basically 1150. It's crazy strong. However, we are theory crafting bows from what we've seen. All weapons have 150 base element on the relics, which is pretty garbage. Now, the elemental augment appears to be 20 per rank, but we've only seen it on the greatsword. Perhaps it's halved on the other weapons, but it would be kind of trash if that was the case. Augments are 30 apiece on the regular stuff, so 
let's assume that it's 20 per rank. So a level 5 is 100 more element. Not crazy, but it's good. Well, we've already seen that you can stack multiple elements of the same mod and of the same level. So assuming we can use 4, that's 400 element. So we're sitting at 550 base element bows. Then you tack on 90 for 3 elemental augments and we're at 640. You know, that's good, still not quite where we're at though. And then you put on the elemental attack skill. Now we do get 20% extra element from our base amount, which of 640 is 128. So plus the extra 100 for level 6, you get an extra 228 element. So now we're at 868. Eh, that's pretty good. It's a good jump from where we started. It's about 100 extra element. Not too crazy, but it's a good boost in damage. But here's where the set bonus comes in. If we are allowed to use that awaken slot to get true critical element, of which we know is an applicable skill, that frees up our entire armor set. Now when we put on the Safi armor, it will provide 150 base element on top of that, which is applying to our base, which means that it's extending our elemental cap and it's not going to be reaching it. We're just pushing it out even further. An extra 150 element means our current base is about 1020. And this adds up because when we use our current bows with the soft reset, we're only losing like 2 damage per shot with no critical element, no true critical element. Our staff reset is that good. Now if we use that and then apply our true critical element multiplier that we get on the weapon, we're looking at about 1580 element on our bows. It's about a 38% increase in elemental damage, not including whatever better sets we can make with more raw since we have much better armor. It's absurd how hard we're going to be hitting if we get that full set bonus on these weapons. We were hitting for almost 100 damage per arrow on Teostra before, even in TA settings. So think about 138 per arrow on those spreads. Yeah, that's going to be insane. Real quick, let's take a look at the bowgun side. First, the base raw of these relics of 270 is actually really good for bowguns. Zenogers only has 280 and a lot of our light bowguns have 270 as well. It's 350 attack on light bowgun, which is what Garuga has, what Volcana has, what Anjanath has. So that's fine. Now since the other weapons get status and elemental rolls on their weapons, bowguns will most likely get an ammo archetype with their variables, otherwise all the light and heavy bowguns would be exactly the same, which would be kind of stupid. So we can at least assume we'd get similar archetypes to what we currently have. So let's assume that going forward. Now bowguns get special awakened skills that apply to them specifically. We've seen deviation suppressor and reload assist which appear to function like their bowgun mod counterparts, kind of like extra mod slot, which is fucking amazing. I want this so bad you don't even know. It's fucking mind blowing. More mod slots, basically. The other interesting one here is normal capacity three. Now this means there are at least three levels of the skill, and since it's capped out on the stars, it's probably just three levels. And they're most likely just add one, two, and three rounds to your normal magazine sizes. Now it's not specifically for normal 3 because it would probably just be worded normal 3 capacity instead. So I'm going to assume that we'd get this for at least all the raw ammos, including pierce and spread. Not sure if every ammo would get it, but you know, who knows. Now we may not get spread capacity 3, it may cap out at 2 because we've seen with the gun lance that you know they're not all equal, but it would be sufficient either way. We don't even know if these can be stacked, but let's say they can't for now. Even just taking what we know, getting 3 extra rounds on a normal 3 would be nuts. Most light bowguns that can use normal 3 have around a 3 or 4 mag already, so getting something like 6 to 7 is outrageous. Plus with the extra mods, we can probably get those normals into a usable state. And if we apply that to spread 3s, which we already have clip 3s of, then getting 5 to 6 on a spread 3 with a light bowgun would make me straight up cream my pants gonna stretch a little bit here and being able to put two of these on and get six extra rounds in a clip that seems ridiculous it would basically invalidate all heavy bow guns now you may think why heavy bowgun can use these mod twos you'd have glutton with 11 to 14 rounds in the clip well yeah <laughs> how fucking crazy would that be but clip sizes matter less and less the higher they go which is why spare shot matters less and less as well so assuming a reload is normal or fast, you'll have plenty of opportunities to reload during flinches or claggers or something. Light Bowgun suffers because the smaller clip sizes they have on like spread 3 means that they reload 3 times as often as Heavy Bowgun, when factoring in Spare Shot Glutton of course. But if Light Bowguns were to bridge that gap and get clip 6 to 8 maybe on spread 3, 
then the only real difference here for Heavy Bowgun and Light Bowgun would be that scope damage. And nobody wants to use the scope anyway. So yeah, Heavy Bowgun's not automatically going to be invalidated because it's still going to be about 30% stronger than Light Bowgun regardless. But the mobility of the Light Bowgun would crush Heavy Bowgun. This kind of theory crafting is really fun because we actually get to kind of make our own bow guns and it feels amazing just thinking about it. Being able to change your clip sizes and your reloads and recoil without even touching the mods. Dude, so fucking excited. And also as a side note, with the recoil and reload mods, even without you know any ammo changes, we can probably have rapid fire element at recoil one and fast reload like in the beta, which would just made me giddy. I cannot wait to use that again. So again, this is all theory crafting at this point, but it's not just baseless speculation. You know, there's some merit to it, at least I think. I am legitimately afraid of this kind of power creep though. Yes, the RNG is gonna make this probably insane to craft, but it's gonna be a thing. And because of this, it means that there's gonna be almost no reason to use other gear going forward. Any future content's just gonna be for fashion or fun. And there's nothing wrong with that inherently. It just means that we're gonna be forced to do this fight forever until you get stuff like this. If you want the best weapons, Jafar is gonna be the only thing you can do to get them. And it being a raid means that it's gonna be locked to events and that'll probably come and go once a month like Kul Tarath does. We'll get it during the festivals and stuff, but that's pretty much it. This is the rest of the end game. Again, not inherently bad. It would definitely keep people's attention for a while and keep people coming back to play when it shows up. But I don't think that's really healthy to be honest. If the RNG grind is really bad, people are going to be very turned off because they won't be able to get the most powerful weapons. And when you see people posting about them and showing them off, they're going to feel kind of bad and it's going to make them not want to play. And if the RNG is easy and you can actually just make these weapons really easily, then again, it's going to invalidate everything else. And I don't know how going forward that's going to be. I sincerely hope that this stuff isn't as powerful as it looks. I really do. Now, Vanoff had mentioned that they should ban the relics from TA runs, which I know doesn't mean a whole lot to most people, but they did ban them in 4U on the principle of the RNG being too crazy, and I honestly think that would be a good move here, but just on the fact that they're just way too strong. For more casual players, dude, revel in the power, it's gonna be nutty. So what does this mean going forward, though? Who knows, maybe this really is the last boss fight for world, I mean, it certainly feels that way. So that's all I got for now though, thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.